Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing a what if. Being the thumb what if of the, the thumbnail of the what if is right here. This is gonna be a universal intro from now on. So yeah, I'm sorry about that. Until I can get more time, because I do have school, summer school at least, I won't be able to post any really good intros. So this is gonna be in intro for a while. So, hope to see you later. Join the Discord server, link in the description, and let's get in to the what if. Wait, wait, nigga. What's good, YouTube? It is me, Drip Kaye, here with another What If video or audio, whichever you guys listen to. Now, in today's video, we're doing part three of What If Deku was Gar's reincarnation. Now, in the last part of part, we left off with a Gar with the USJ incident. I did skip the whole hero. Um, the heroes versus villains? Yeah, the heroes versus villains um, exercise with All Might because I wanted to move that to after, and there's a reason why. So let's just get into the what if. To, let's find that reason. Now, um, after Shigaraki was captured, the students would actually be given time off from school, approximately about a week. But this would cause the school to actually move the, the sports festival about two months later is around two months later so all events that would have happened after the year's day has been pushed back to two months later is what i'm trying to say now um when the students would return to class like that um the week later or i, I think i gave him two weeks two a week to two weeks later the class um Aizawa will be there and then tell the class to get their hero suits on that they're going to be doing a um a test with him and all might or an yeah, a test or exam or heroes versus villains exam take test thing. As um, you know, they would be a little bit shocked in asking. So we're just not going to ease back into things as Aizawa says. No, as he um points to the wall and everyone gets their hero costumes on and meets Aizawa, Aizawa and All Might outside. Well, in in another testing area where they took the um entrance where the entrance exams was held. I believe that's where it was. Um, now, um, upon arriving, everyone will be waiting for All Might. To which All Might would then explain to everyone that they're going to be drawing lots for teammates. That this is going to be a heroes versus villain type test or exams. To because and they said that they had waited. They had decided to put this off because they were going to be doing rescue training at the USJ. But thanks to the villain attack, that didn't happen. But what they did accomplish was one of the goals of the rescue training at the USJ of being team working with others that you don't know much about their quirk, or working with people that you wouldn't normally work with, or um, experiencing random team ups, at least. So they would say that this is something. This is actually a reason why we decided to make this um push this test actually till after the USJ. But because of the incident, it, it was supposed to happen to, like two days after the USJ. But you know because of the villains attacking, we had to push that back a little bit more. Also, consequently, pushing back the uh, sports festival by two months. This will be the last test you in the assignment thing you have for now, but then you'll have to train for the next two months for to um, prepare for the um, sports festival. Everyone will be a little bit happy as all my then tell everyone to come up, pick a box, and to choose their partners um, to get their partners chosen. Now only half the class will be able to go, so he will pick ten people. They ten of those people will have to go. Because there's 20 people in the classroom, it's 10. Um, so if 10 people go, there's a less likely chance of somebody pulling another person's teammate on accident. So <clears throat> 10 people will go, and I actually have to decide on who I want Deku to be teamed up with. So let me see, right quick. He's definitely still going to be fighting Bakugo, but. 
still. Let me decide on who I want him to um, be partnered with. I have decided to give Deku Hiroshima. You know, both technically, both technically being Earth types. Sand is a part of the Earth. It is magnet release, which is made of both Earth and wind release. I believe lightning release, maybe for the, maybe for the um third Kaze Kage is um iron sand and Graza's gold sand, maybe, but I doubt it. But yeah, <clears throat> it'll be Kirishima and Deku versus Bakugo and Todoroki. The, um, my top four favorite people, with Kirishima being my number one favorite, if I'm being honest. Well, favorite students, at least. Um, no. Everyone will get their names pulled, and um, once they will find their partners, Aizawa then will take them to a um, monitoring room where he would then, uh, where All Might would then give them to um, show them a pool box that um, is labeled villains and one that's labeled heroes. As he would then pull out two different, um, two, um, what is it called? Two balls. One being Team A, and the other being Team B, which Deku and Kirishima were assigned Team B, while Bakugo going to the rookie was assigned Team A. Team A will be the villains, while Team B will be the heroes. No. Deku um, and Kirishima would head out, being the first match, and Kirishima would ask Deku what plan does he have for Bakugo and Todoroki, since I actually decided to now I'm going to let Bakugo and Todoroki go ahead of time. As soon as the letters were chosen, they went into the building with the bomb and things like that. As Deku would then tell Kirishima that Bakugo has a temper, and that Bakugo will most likely skip him and come straight after it. Um, will skip, um... Let's skip <laughs> Kirishima and go straight after Deku, after himself. And Kirishima would ask why. As, um, Deku would then tell Kirishima that they have a history of Bakugo not being the nicest person to him. This is how he will word it. He doesn't want Bakugo to be kicked out because he was a bully. I mean, that he kind of was. He should have been kicked out. I should really do ba um, background checks on their students, but still. And Kirishima says, wow, that's very unmanly. As Deku says, yeah, I guess. But he'll most likely come after me. <clears throat> I want you to stay beside me. <clears throat> They'll go off. We'll work together as a team on this. I don't have a plan, but we'll have to, we'll have to get our way through this. As all my, as Deku and him arrive at the, um... At the places they get their five minutes to try to come up with a plan, but they don't really think they don't really know the plan. Deku only um Deku knows that um Todoroki has a half and half quirk. He knows half of it is ice, but he doesn't know what the other half is yet. He would not know that yet. Todoroki has not disclosed what his other half of his quirk is. Everyone only knows that he has half of his quirk is ice. But you think about it, Todoroki can also use water. If he boils the, if he uses his fire with the ice to shoot an attack at the same time, bam, boiling water. Yeah, I like that. Um. Anyway, let's moving on. All my, um, once the five minutes are up, All Might would then tell them to go. That the test has now started. As the heroes, as Deku and Kirishima walk, or will barge in. As Todoroki would tell Bakugo. Um, would ask Bakugo. He'll um he'll tell him when to jump, and when he does jump. But little does he know, little do they know, Deku has a sand clone. Yes, yes. <laughs> Deku did do a little bit of cheating by forcing his sand throughout the building, and using his chakra made a clone that's that's inside of the um basically that's kind of inside of the building where the bomb is and it's sending him the feedback through the sand kind of so he's seeing what the plan is you know no one knows this no one's noticed this but yeah now um i don't know 
Todoroki would then tell Bakugo, jump now. As Bakugo would jump, as Todoroki then freezes the entire building. But Deku's clone had told him about this, as Deku had enveloped him in Kirishima within an, a sand a sandball, like what Gara used against Sasuke, at least. That same sandball that I've been having him use for a lot. <clears throat> the sand dome, the dome of sand. Now, um, Todoroki is waiting for All Might to hear the villain team wins, but nothing is coming through. As Todoroki says, All Might, call the match I won. As he said, I don't think you won yet. As All Might would then press the other radio and say, Team Heroes, are you still there? Yes, we're here. Okay. As he then tells Todoroki that they're still there, Todoroki is a little angered. His eyes wasn't enough, but he won't use his fire. He'll never use his fire. As Deku, as the um, as the ice around Deku's sand dome begins to crack, as Deku is moving, having the sand on the outside move so fast and in different directions, that it's beginning to cr crack the ice. From, especially for how fast it's moving, it's also melting the ice around the dome at least. As it finally cracks and breaks, as t um, that's how it, as Deku and Kirishima finally drop down. As Deku then tells Todoroki to watch this, as Deku then closes his eye, as an eye of sand appears, but then the eye of sand will then go into Deku's sand gourd, or the sand that Kirishima finally notices is coming from the sand gourd, that doesn't seem to be frozen. <clears throat> So, this is when this where the sand clone is, which actually unfroze itself, or froze itself because Deku was also doing the same thing there, but Todoroki and them weren't really caring too much about what's behind them or above them or none of that. They weren't really caring, they were just waiting for that, and they weren't listening enough. So, plus Deku's a ninja, so, found him. <clears throat> as Deku has his eye closed, as Deku then tells, um, tells, Kirishima to grab onto his hand. <clears throat> As Kirishima does this, I mean onto his shoulder. As Kirishima does this, Deku holds up one side before him and Kirishima disperse into a sandstorm or a sand tornado, signifying the use of a sand body flicker. <clears throat> As Deku and Kirishima then appear silently in the room, right in the in the bomb room. As Bakugo and Todoroki don't yet notice. As Kirishima is about to say something before Deku will cover his mouth. As Deku, t as Kirishima looks at Deku, as Deku then says, as Deku then has sand come from behind him, or come from his gourd, where the sand, the sand in the the entire building actually begins to go in surround it. As Todoroki and Bakugo turn around, but it's too late now. Deku then says. Oh, damn, what do I, I can see the sand tsunami? Not just, I can't use sand burial because that'll kill them. Could I use sand coffin? No, that might kill them too. He could imp incapacitate them, but then he might get in trouble. So sand tsunami, but I use that move a lot. Damn, what what you two I want to use? Let me decide on which ones I want to use. Decided to go with the Jutsu of Desert Hand, and the reason why is that <laughs> basically I'm gonna have him manipulate the sand. Um, to make a bunch of, to make at least, well, two hands to then grab both Bakugo, or no, four hands to grab Bakugo, well, or actually eight, because it's two of them. Bakugo and Todoroki by each of their limbs, being their arms, legs, and then their arms and legs, four, four arms and legs for both. Both of their arms, one grabs one arm, one grabs the other, one grabs one leg, one grabs the other leg, bam. And then it continues on with the next person. <clears throat> As he then lets go of Kirishima's mouth, as Kirishima then walks up to the barn before touching it. Call, causing All Might to say, Hero Team wins. As... It wasn't as exciting as it would have been in canon, as the canon fight is, if I'm being honest. Because God trained Deku to be a ninja, and ninja don't really like they try their best to do their their um fights tactically, stealthily. I mean, they're ninja. This is what they this is what they do. So this is kind of what God tried to do, or Deku tried to do. 
And I keep confusing him with Gar. Now, if I'm being honest, we don't really care about the rest of the matches. But, at the end, All Might would then ask everyone, who do they think the MVP of the entire test was? Everyone would then tell, um, would then point at Midoriya. And, uh, the MVP team, actually. But the end, the MVP being Midoriya and their team, him and Kirishima's team actually being the MVP team. Saying that Midoriya created a strategy that allowed him to sneak to watch Bakugo and Shoto the entire time while they were discussing the bombs on their plan somehow. And Bakugo and Todoroki look at him and um and look at All Might as how did he do that? Because they didn't even notice. As All Might pulls up the footage and then they then see a Deku made of sand standing on top of the building. As everyone, um, hmm, how do I look? As D then says, Deku then sneakily had gotten into the bomb room by using another jutsu that allowed him to conjure an eye. And then is how what they predict is that his teleportation, um, his teleportation ability, um, at least requires him to have been to that place or to see where he's going. And using the third eye jutsu while using his teleport that um the eyeball jutsu while using his teleportation gave him a really big uh, advantage, and it formed from the sand of the um sand clone or the sand clone is what they would dub it, which is actually what its name is, but of the clone it came from the sand that that the clone was made of, so. Buck Deku didn't even have to risk. Um, you guys learning about his plan and you guys were too focused upon waiting for him to come through the front door Seeing as how that was the only way that you guys never thought of him coming from the back in Which he then had Kirishima um, when Kirishima almost went in there went in there and him and Kirishima landed Kirishima almost said something He then covered Kirishima's map before having all his sense of, um, going uh, behind you guys before then kept restraining and capturing the villains also as they then, as um, he says, then had Kirishima touch the bomb, claiming them as the winners. As they will, everyone will look at Deku, ask how do you come up with that strategy. As Deku will look at Kirishima, and Deku will then say, I didn't have any strategy, if I'm being honest. I told Kirishima I wouldn't be able to come with, with this strategy because the Todoroki's unknown other half of power that we've never seen him use or that he's never talked about. As, as this is what Mr. Arzawa will come in and say, Shoto has a half ice, half fire quirk. Hmm. That would have been pretty. Um, if I'm being honest, it would have been pretty. Ta um, pretty broken against my sand, seeing as how fire plus sand equals glass. But I guess I see your point. <clears throat> now, Deku. What do I want? What do I want him to do? Actually, hmm. hmm. Let me see. Ah, um, they would then thank everyone, and they um, as Isaiah would then tell the class to go back to the classroom to gather things and leave and prepare for the UA entrance exams. They're going to get the next two months of off of school for training. But Deku, uh, as I would then tell, uh, All Might would then tell Deku to stay behind, as Deku does. As All Might would then ask Deku to, if he would accompany him to Nezu's office. Nezu, um, Deku would not say, why not? Now, All Might, upon arriving, Nezu says, ah, um, Midoriya. All Might here wanted to bring you to my office because he has something very secretive to ask you. It's very secretive and no one else can know of. As Deku nods his head and says, um, okay. She looks at All Might as All Might would then begin to explain to Deku about his quirk. As he would then ask Deku, could he take on his quirk being that of one for all? As Deku doesn't see a problem with this, as Deku would say, sure, but how would that work? 
It's All Might would then tell Deku to stand up and take his shirt off. As Deku's a little bit creeped out and says, why? As All Might says, he needs to see how built his body is to see if you if his body will be able to handle this quirk. Before Deku would take off the shirt, notice, as everyone notices, Deku's actually pretty built. Pretty well built. Built enough, probably a lot more built than what he was if, um, during Ant Cannon. As all for oh, not all for one, All Might would then tell Deku that he's ready to inherit his quirk already. That they won't even have to put him through extensive physical training either. But we would then tell Deku that during the two months, he's going to train him to use his quirk in conjunction with his sand power. Well, with the well, with his sand, if he if they can, Deku would not. As All Might would then um, tell Deku to eat a piece of hair. Deku looks at him and says, "Is this a joke, Nezu?" As um, Nezu sucks his head and says, "Shockingly, no, or surprisingly, no." As All Might says, "For you to inherit the quirk, you have to swallow a piece of the user's DNA while they are willing, willing to give you the quirk." The quirk. Deku says, "Really?" As All Might says, "Yeah, it's pretty weird quirk." As Deku then grab the air and ask, "Can he get some water at least?" As he would get some water, would we'll eat the hair, swallow with the water. And, you know, like a couple hours, like an hour or two later, actually, the quirk, he would have he, he digested the hair, inheriting one for all. As All Might would then tell Deku to meet up, meet him up at Tacoma Beach. And yes, they're still going to move tra trash, but there's going to be, uh, Deku's really going to just use the sand to end the sand of the beach to get all the trash off of the beach. But, yeah. Now, um, if, if I'm being honest, that's what he's going to do. I, there was no reason not to spoil it, because that's really what he's going to do. So Deku will leave and will prepare, and the next day we'll meet All Might at the Cobra Beach for training. Now, yes, All Might did not choose Mirio because he didn't see, he, while he, Mirio was a very good candidate, he didn't think Mirio truly had what it took to become the number one hero. Muriel has already also already been a three year a third year student, which means that he has a pretty good handle on his quirk already. And to add another quirk into that, while well, he's going to stop learning at UA within a year, and for him to master one for all within a year, in the way All Might wants him to, he doesn't think it's possible. But Midoriya is a first year student, a good candidate, and from what he can tell, a good hero. Wait, did I already have Deku get off, off one for all? No, I don't think I did. I might have, but I, I'm going to change it to now, actually. Um. Anyways, this this is actually kind of what happens when you you uh, what else off the top of your head. Now, um, moving on, Deku would have been now um. Would have met up with All Might at Tokyo Beach pretty early, wearing his a um, well wearing Gara's war outfit with the sand gourd on his back. He says, "Is that your hero costume? How did you get it out of U.S.?" Zeka says, "No, this is actually a costume made of sand that he formed into clothes of um the person that he his pose power that he has." So All Might would get it. He says, first could you move the sand off the beach and into a neat pile so they can come pick it up?" As Deku will say, fine. As Deku will then touch the ground. As his hands will move into one, into a hand seal. Before then saying, calling out the name of Desert Suspension. As forming, uh, you know, the attack, um, not the attack. It's actually the jutsu that allows him to levitate the desert cloud jutsu, what I call it. It's actually his technical name is Desert Suspension. But I like to call it the D desert cloud jutsu. Anyways, he would use that to make basically make all the sand of the beach that's, that has trash on top of it form a giant cloud and then move the sand onto land. Before then, with him now putting his the, his chakra within his sand, can now basically control the sand to come from un, from all the sand that's on the trash, inside the trash, under the trash, on top of the trash to come back onto the beach, leaving a relatively clean beach. Now all this has to be done is for them to go pick it up. It's all my would then tell Deku now it's time to start their training. We then as teach Deku how to activate the quirk. But what would shock All Might is when Deku would try to activate one for all. Deku all for one is mixing one for all is mixing with his chakra in a way. 
So off, one for all is already moving throughout his body constantly, and it's more of an on and off switch, like or keeping it constantly on at all the time. I believe that's how full Callan works. Um, but yeah. Having one for all run throughout his body the entire time rather than focusing it at one point, Deku would yell out smash, allowing him to punch the air without breaking any of his limbs. So I might have said, wow, I was worried that you would break one of your hand or your arm. As Deku says, huh? He says, um, my sensei told me about her and her predecessors of the quirk, um, breaking their limbs when using one for all when I first got it. And you didn't think to tell me that? Um, no. Did you break your limbs? No. I could use one 100% off bat, off rim. Wow. Must be nice, I guess. As All Might would then say, now, let's begin our training. As Deku will begin to learn to implement one for all, um, the quick energy of one for all within his attacks. Not his sand yet. He hasn't yet gotten that, but within his taijutsu. He's been working on it secretly, but he has not yet got it. And this is where we're going to get into a two-month time skip to the start of the UA entrance exams. Yeah. <laughs> the UA sports festival. I said entrance exam, the sports festival. Now, um, Deku would arrive, obviously, to class, and everyone would go out to the stadium for the sports festival. And Deku would be the first one there, being kind of the leader of class 1A. Deku not only took on the villains, it sealed the big and beat and basically um, defeated the top three of the three big dogs of the villain attack in on the um, in the USA incident. Is stealthy like a ninja and has pretty good strategies from what they can tell. Deku, the guard is Kazakaki survived, so he'd be pretty smart and has a bunch. Of different um, ability and can use sand and seems like the kind of calm and collected type person which he is kind of there's still a little bit of Deku before Gara inside of him but he's just shattered by shadowed by Deku after Gara now now um, everyone and all the students will be, um, be waiting for the host of the event or the announcer or the referee of all the events or whatever you want to call it to arrive where then this is where someone shockingly would appear and it's not who it was in canon it was hold on let me think of who this is the number two hero endeavor shocking most of the students as endeavor would then call up the um the the representative of the students of the first year students, Banky Zuka Midoriya. They actually forced him to call, to have to call Deku. He was going to call Shoto, but he they forced him to call Deku. Now, um, reason why Endeavor became the host or the referee is because he um, wanted his son. He wanted his son to actually use um, his fire, and this is the best way for him to to kind of force him into using his fire, the fire portion of his quirk. So, as he can see. Now, um, all right, so, um, I really don't know where we left off. I believe we left off at the start of the entrance exams, but not that just at the sports festival. So, yes. Now, obviously, Endeavor would have called up Deku, and Deku would have issued out a challenge, telling them that if anybody can pierce his sand, then he will go all out against them. But if no one is able to, and they're not worthy of using of him using his full power. Before the entire the of the students there would then begin to boo Deku off. As Deku um Deku then says, um then shrugs his shoulders, he walks off stage. As Endeavor points at the screen before something will come up. This being a um I don't know why I shouldn't say an edit course. A um, parkour course, a fun course, race course. See what the fuck is that thing called? God, hey. Um, edit course, race course. You know the the course. Obstacle course, obstacle race. Apparently, that's what it's called. I I guess. 
Now, <clears throat> Deku, as normal, would still be in the back. I mean, no, Deku would be in the back preparing for this. Now, everyone's preparing the quirks. As Deku is using his force, is forcing his sand within the ground so that he can make more sand under him. So, Deku's actually forced to get throughout the entirety of the arena. So, there's a bunch of sand in the arena, and it's currently holding up the entire arena at the moment. Now, that doesn't mean that if Deku was to use that, all that sand in the arena would collapse. Yeah, we're not going to let it collapse. It's just like, there's something. There's metal there, so you won't be able to roll the metal, so it'll still stay up. Um, so yeah. Now, when Endeavor would start the race, he would see as his son would then freeze off. Now, uh, would then cover the entire entrance in ice or the floor and then freeze off the entrance. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to let him freeze off the entrance, actually, because how would that get through there? Now, Telltale would begin to smirk. As Endeavor is extremely happy until he then notices as Deku is on a cloud of sand. As Deku uses his famous cloud jutsu, De sand cloud jutsu, or does a suspension for others who naturally know the name of the ju For those who know what I'm jutsu, I'm talking about. As Deku begins to levitate with the sand over the ice and getting out. As he then begins to f far surpass Shoto. As Soto then shoots out a beam of ice or ice wall at Deku. Only for Deku to then um, form a, a for his um actually only for a clone of Deku to be made out of the sand that he is under. So this is a big thing. Of, it's really big, so he has enough for another clone. As the clone's hands it transforms into a drill that begins to rotate. As Deku then calls out the name of Jutsu. Sand drill as his the sand obviously begins to drill through the ice. Now Shoto is currently going up the ice, but Deku's going through it. And before Shoto could get down and or over the ice in general, Deku would have already been through the ice and would have passed them. This is when Deku would then see a shadow over him. As he would then see the zero pointers, the boy, well, the robots on the entrance exam, zero pointers, one pointers, two pointers, three pointers, all being there. As De I don't know what else to say as desert, as Deku then says, I believe it was called desert hands or sand hands, desert hand jutsu, I believe is what it was called. As everyone then sees as the ground from under, underneath the robots will begin to form giant hands that began to grab the robots and tear them apart. Shocking the, the students that are watching that are behind Deku along with Shoto. Shocking the teachers and the pro all the pro heroes that are there at the event. Now, this is when Deku will then finally hear someone yelling, Deku, you damn nerd, I won't allow you to beat me. As Deku would then turn around only to see Bakugo. As Deku then lowers the sand cloud enough for him to touch the ground while going through, after he went through hand signs. Now I gotta figure out this is actually a jutsu, but I want him to make a sand wall. A wall of sand that is that and it goes really high. Frankly, it'll take Bakugo at least two to three minutes to, to scale over it, giving Deku a huge lead, and that means over everyone. So Deku will easily just go over the fall, and when it comes to the mines, if I'm being honest, he just really levitates over that. But he does have. When, since the, how the minefield is made of a bunch of gravel, he then refined that gravel into sand and has a bunch of, has um, located all of the mines and has sand on top of the mines. <clears throat> As Deku then heads off towards the entrance, his endeavors a lot, well, not just pretty angry, he's really angry at the fact that his Shoto did not come in first. As President Mike would then announce Izuku Midoriya as being the number one, um, the, being the first person to complete the race, putting him in first place. 
is when one then sees Deku then turns around as they then hear Deku get shout release as everybody who actually is now on the um, minefield then blew up sending everyone everywhere I mean not like actually blew up like the mines blew up sending people flying in different directions even Shoto and Bakugo as Deku then says, huh, took care of that. As the devil is a lot, not, not just a lot of angry in him, he's extremely angry. As he then says that if Deku, he then um, tries to disqualify Deku only for President Mike to overrule it. We're going to say how President Mike overruled this, along with Aizawa, to overrule the um, ruling, seeing as how 10, while well, he did finish the race. He probably had that already in place before the race, and he just released it, and he just uh, finished whatever that power was. He just basically just used it and bam, it blew him up. There's nothing he can't really disqualify him or something like that. Anyways, moving on. Now, um, if I'm being honest, Deku will be waiting there for a pretty long time because it did take everybody a long time to recover. But all the standings that happened in canon will be there. So all the people who would pass this race will pass now. Now, um, once everyone is there, all um no no might endeavor would have then said um would have then begin to announce that um the announce the point system. Saying how it goes up from five every Every time someone's above someone, so first, last place gets we'll say five points, second place, 10 points, third place, 35 points. I mean, not 35, um, 15 points, and then I believe it's supposed to cap off with first place at 210 points. But we go to the endeavor would then reveal that, or actually, pretty happily, would we'll then reveal that first place actually gets 10 million points. So Deku would then begin to look around. As he then sees everyone is now staring at him. As Deku says, hmm, I'm going to have some fun with this. As Deku then begins to release some killing intent. Scaring everyone away. As Deku, everyone, uh, as he would then tell everyone that there is now a cavalry battle that they will be taking place in. Now all the events have already been pre-chosen actually. I'm going to have them be pre-chosen. Saying that there's going to be a cavalry battle. You must have at least two, but at max four people on your team. So, everyone begins to choose teams with a lot of people, excluding Deku. But the same people that would have approached Deku and Cannon would have approached him there. I believe it was Tokiyami, Mei Hatsume, and Uraraka. But as soon as everyone got the headband and was ready, Endeavor would start the event, only for Deku to use Desert Suspension. As everyone's wondering what he's doing, as Deku's Desert Suspension cloud, the cloud of sand under him was so big. As he then says, I believe it was called Sand... Was it called Sand Hail? I, I, I was playing to see that we strike it, I used it due to a lot. I can't remember its name for the life of me. Hold up, guys. Sand shower. No one hears him cause out this attack. As a lot of the teams began to be pelted with sand, and it's really hard and moving really fast, causing most teams to be un um, unable to avoid it. It was going to go on as Todoroki then uses his ice to push him to um, put up a barrier above him. Well, it actually makes an ice umbrella. We're going to give him the ability to make items out of ice. He will then make an ice umbrella. Speaking of ice, I might make a what if Deku, I believe. What? what wait, wait a minute. Alright, I'm running card. Anyways, I might make a what if with Deku eating the ice ice fruit. So, if you guys want to see that. I mean, I've gotten pretty far in One Piece, but I don't think I have enough information, so allow me to finish One Piece, go ahead and read the manga, which is gonna take me like a month or two at most. Okay, at least, actually, if I'm being honest, so you guys should be getting that at later in the year, maybe even next year. So, yeah. 
Now, anyways, moving on. Um, Deku. Um, but yeah, I was. I I will make the what if he will eat the ice ice fruit. I could make him like Aokiji, Hokuzan, but I don't know if I want to. So I don't know. Anyways, moving on. Now, um, Shoto would have been, uh, made an ice umbrella big enough to um to uh, actually surround his entire team. But surprisingly, he doesn't know how. But the sand began above him, and you can see that only above his under on his umbrella, the sand was falling faster and harder than everywhere else. As he did, he could tell this by the craters that were appearing around him, along with his ice cracking, and he's constantly tr adding ice to it so that it'll constantly heal the ice umbrella. But soon he'll be extremely overwhelmed with Deku winning out. Now I might do some tune in his ends type things with this at end of what if off with the cavalry battle and then like have them come back like a month later with training for the finals or the um the one on one tournament. So I might actually do that. I'm gonna do that actually. It sounds a lot better. And it also gives me point a time a time to do something with the story. Now moving on. Deku um would have been heard someone as Bakugo then comes up up to the side of Deku as Bakugo angled himself to where he was when he jumped off of his teammate he was not touching the ground and then shot himself up with explosions allowing him and shot himself around the sand cloud as Bakugo is about to touch Deku as this is when a sand claw will come out as they didn't swat Bakugo, Bakugo would be able to save himself before he would touch the ground and land back onto where his teammates are. As he says, damn it, it's no use. We'll have to go after the other teams instead. As Deku's teammates then ask, what was that hand? As Deku then smiles, as he then says, Shukaku's hand. Shocking. Oh, everyone. As everyone says, what's a Shukaku? As Deku says, you guys probably meet him. It's pretty soon. Or right, when we become pro heroes. And hope, hopefully, in hopes of we never having really to fight villains again. As everyone would nod. Now, I don't know if I've had, um, if I actually had him bring Shukaku out yet. I can't really remember, but still, moving on. This is when um, Deku would then see a Shoto has shot himself up using ice on one of. Uh, he used ice on his foot to shoot himself up and to keep balance by also using ice shooting from his hand. And I don't get to keep true balance. As Deku would then say, hmm, Sand Boy. As sand will then begin to form in his hand as he then begins to shoot off at high speeds, pelting Todoroki. As Todoroki, as Todoroki then creates a wall of ice, only to see that the sand bullets are making it pretty far in the ice and they keep on increasing, only, one f only for one to hit him and pierce through his shoulder. As Todoroki doesn't really wear any of the protective gear, they're not wearing any of the protective gear that the um what's it called it is um that tunings and um ninjas wear so this will obviously hurt a lot more as Deku says have you had enough Shikaku says I mean not Shikaku as Todoroki then says I won't I don't have enough I don't think that's enough to take um damn I cannot say this right it's not enough. That's nowhere near enough to take me down. As Deku would then say, fine. Hmm. As Deku's sand would then, as Deku then holds his hand out, as some of his sand then begins to go around Todoroki, 
Before Deku then says, Sand Coffin. Before squeezing his his hand. As all the pro heroes were watching, Endeavor watching um, his son from below, or on a big screen that he's watching to monitor this, sees as Deku is slowly squeezing Shoto as they all hear his bones popping and Shoto giving off screams. As Deku then dislocates Shoto's right arm, making it extremely hard to use, let alone lift up. Uh, then begin to dislocate his leg. Oh, I don't, is that possible? I don't want him to break any of his bones. This is gonna take a long time. To, well, no, not with recovery girl. So yeah, we're gonna have him break his leg. Just a little bit. It won't be too painful. Okay, I'm saying that and I've never broken a bone. It's probably really painful for Shoto. As Endeavor then tells Izuku to stop this torture or he'll disqualify him. As President Mike agrees, saying, yeah, that it is pretty villain villainous, -y, villainous for him to torture his opponents. I mean, this is okay if he uses it against villains, but against um, his fellow students, kind of not really. As Deku says, I won't, I won't, um, I won't kill him. I'll just incapacitate him. As this is when Daryl says, stop now. As Deku then uh, squeezes his hand, almost all the way, only enough for him to quickly incapacitate Shoto, only for Shoto to fall down to the ground. But it's for Inja to then break off from the group to use his reciprocal burst to jump up, and then to catch Todoroki, then hit a wall and then jump back towards his team. With the knocked with an unconscious Shoto in his arms. Zendeavor says, I had to disqualify you for that. But you didn't give up. You did stop when I said to. Zendeku says, if I had squeezed my um my um hand any tight, if I would have fully closed my hand, he would have died. Shocking the pro heroes there. He says a ruthless hero. As this is when someone surprisingly would have gotten up, being Bakugo. As Bakugo would say, I got you now, Deku. As Deku then um, points at Bakugo, or has his hand out towards Bakugo. She then says, Sand Shuriken. As he then waves his hand like he was throwing Shuriken himself, only for Shuriken to be then begin to shoot out from the sand cloud. Hitting Bakugo. Not piercing, but <laughs> they, they're sharp. Well, they, uh, they might cut him a little bit, but they won't do any lasting damage. Only for Endeavor, before Bucket go to touch the ground, Endeavor to call the end of the cavalry battle. Naming Izuku, Izuku's team as the number one team so far. And all the teams that would have passed then would pass now on to the next round, which will be held within a month. And I will see you guys later. I actually have to record part four pretty soon so that I can upload it tomorrow. And it's currently eight o'clock, so this is gonna be this one is gonna be out pretty late, and it's already a really long what if. So yeah, sorry about that. Should have got it. Should have got it. If I would script the what if, I'd probably get it done faster. But I don't, I can't script. I'm sorry. I'm terrible when it comes to typing out things, and I don't have the patience to just sit down for very long to script something out. <clears throat> so yeah, I will see you guys in the next what if. Drew Kage out. Discord link in the description.